Judy, thank you. Well, 12 years ago today, TWA Flight 800 exploded in midair off the south shore of Long Island. 230 people lost their lives. Tonight, we're going to take a look back at what happened that summer night and where air travel safety stands now. We're also taking your calls and sharing your emails. 516-393-1800 is the number. Long Island Talks starts right now. Twelve years ago tonight, burning wreckage from TWA Flight 800 could be seen floating on the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of East Mauritius. Hello and welcome to Long Island Talks. Here's where you weigh in on the news we cover. I'm Lawrence Yvonne in for Lee. Well, it was one of the country's worst air disasters. TWA Flight 800 exploded over Mauritius Inlet, killing all 230 people on board. Tonight, friends and families remembering the loved ones they lost that night. News 12 Long Island's Jill Wagner is at the TWA Flight 800 Memorial at Smith Point Ken County Park with more on this. Jill? Lauren, victims, friends, and family tell me it was a hot and humid night just like this one 12 years ago that their lives were forever changed. Every July 17th is your toughest day of the year. It was this day 12 years ago that TWA Flight 800 exploded just off Long Island's South Shore. But for Jerry Kaufman, it feels like yesterday. He was TWA's disaster response coordinator, close friends with the plane's captain and crew, and one of the first on the scene that night. We went and we went on a plane and we checked the, the bay, I mean the, the water. They didn't know what they were looking at. And we thought there might be survivors and we came down and all it was was life vests. Then we spent the whole night, the first night we pulled in 102 uh, souls. All 230 passengers and crew were killed that fateful night, including 14 Long Islanders. Nothing can bring them back, and now their family and friends cling to memories, to each other, and to this memorial at Smith Point, where the names of all those who lost their lives in an instant are now permanently etched in stone. It's um, a reminder of uh, people that are on their way innocently as we all get on aircraft and we all put our faith in God that we're going to make it to our destination and with his joy and laughter it was on this plane. And there will be a short ceremony tonight to honor those victims. Friends and family will read all 230 names and then they'll head down to the beach at around 830 to coincide with the time Flight 800 exploded over the Atlantic Ocean 12 years ago tonight. In Smith Point, Jill Wagner, News 12 Long Island. Lauren. Jill, thank you. Well, joining me tonight, News 12 Long Island's Trish Bergen. She was the very first reporter on the scene out in the Atlantic with, with first responders that were looking for survivors after that explosion. And also here, former Federal Aviation Administration Inspector Richard Wierowski. Hey. Uh, welcome to you both. Trish, you were one of the first people out on the scene there. You were out there in a boat after you got the call. What did you see? Yeah, um, we had finished up our, uh, I had finished up my day, and I was home, and I was watching the TV, and Scott Feldman did, uh, I was watching News 12, and Scott Feldman did a special report break-in. And it was um, just after 8.30 in the evening, and um, he had said, um, there's something um, on fire in the middle of the ocean just off of Mariches, and uh, we're, we're not sure where it is right now, but we're trying to get a, a crew there. So I called into the station and I said, you know, I can head out there and take a look at what it is. And at first the assignment desk had said to me, you know, we think that it might be a barge because it's very large. So we got a crew out there, we get to um, a marina, and uh, a family was there and was able to um, put us in a boat and bring us out to the middle of, and then I get the phone call that, Trish, it's not a barge, you're heading out to a plane. And I thought, oh my goodness. That, you know, there may be survivors out there. We were ho we just had our fingers crossed that when we got out there that there would still be people alive. And uh, we got out, the plane was just fully engulfed. The smell- So you were out there before first responders even got, got um, there? There were some first responders who had gotten there from local, um, you know, I guess the Coast Guard and all of that. They had gotten out right away. As far as reporters though, no, I was the first reporter in the nation on the scene there. And um, the, fi the, the plane was fully engulfed and, and still sort of protruding out of the water a bit. And then as we got there, it slowly went down. The hardest part of the whole thing, though, I think, is when I was live uh, doing live phoners and the news anchors kept saying to me, you know, we've got Long Island families who are sitting at home right now watching this and awaiting 
word, are there any survivors out there? Do you see any survivors? And time and again, I had to say no, still no survivors. No, it doesn't look like there's any survivors. And that was really, really tough. And you say just being at the scene there, You've taken that with you for the rest of your life. You're afraid to fly on. Oh planes. yeah. Uh, now I fly because I don't let it stop me. But it's very, still very difficult to get on an airplane after having seen that. And I'm sure it's the case for a lot of people who were at backyard barbecues at the time and they saw the explosion happen in the sky, or people who knew some of the the, the folks who were on that plane. Sure. So yeah, a lot of people were definitely very affected. So to hear of the changes that that are now coming about 12 years later is, um, yeah, a, you know, a, a bit of a relief, but... Right, well, let's bring uh, Richard Wyroski into, yeah. the, into the mix here, because these changes, 12 years now, um, out, out of this crash, and they're going to, finally, the FAA is requiring these, these changes that uh, hopefully will prevent this potentially explosive vapors um, from getting near these fuel tanks, but this is a very costly fix for the airlines, and they've been railing against this. Is this... Is this the final solution? Is this going to prevent a crash like TWA 800? Well, it took the NTSB four years to come up with a conclusion on actually what happened in 1996. And they spent $200 million, and they came up with this uh, hype, uh, this uh, problem with the explosive vapors. The FAA on just yesterday, July 16th, uh, put out a ruling that all aircraft, uh, 2,800 airliners, will be retrofitted with that's, that's this little, earthing system. A little more than half of the, the fleet. Yeah, in the, it's the, the large, uh, larger aircraft with this type of fuel system. But is it just the cost that these airlines are against this? Well, the cost is, uh, is of course, the prob one of the problems. Could be about over uh, 300000 per plane. Well, it's these. actually, there's more problems than that. Some aircraft might not be able to be converted, and if that's the case, they'll have to be taken out of service. At come, that, come 2010, right? Come 2010. Yeah, they have about nine years actually yeah, to, they to have do nine it. Nine years this, to so do this it. This is not immediate. The thing is that the, there's so many aircraft to do it; it's going to take that long to do it. But the the problem we have is if the aircraft have to be taken out of service, then that's a loss the airlines will also have. And we all know they're already suffering right now. And yeah, that's it, true. nobody, it's not news to anybody that the airlines lost another two billion dollars this quarter to major carriers. The thing here is the FAA came out eight years after the NTSB concluded that this might be the problem or was the problem. There's been a lot of consensus, a lot of discussion about this. Is it the problem? Is that really what happened? Is that what the holdup's been? Well, People the thing is, this down. never happened before. Right. And it's uh, never happened again. It never happened never again. Since. Right. Commercial aviation is 80 years old. 80 years. We never had an accident like this. It was a horrific accident. The problem with the wreckage being underwater made it much diffi more sure. difficult to determine what the problem was. All right, someone who knows just how horrific this accident was, uh, he's joining us from Smith Point County Park, Jim Hurd. He's the vice president. He's the director of the TWA Flight 800 Family Association. His 29-year-old son, Jamie, was on board that faithful flight. Jim, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Hey there, Jim. Yes. So tell us a little bit about what's going on there tonight. Uh, we're going to have a uh, memorial service start about 8 p.m. and we'll uh, have a little prayer, reading of the names, and we'll end about 8:30. And uh, at that time, uh, a lot of folks take uh, a white carnation, go down to the uh, beach, uh, throw it in the water, and some just stay up in the uh, in the area. Your son Jamie died aboard that flight. He was 29 years old. Twelve years later, uh, what do you think about? What What do you remember? I remember it awful lot, but uh, I guess the biggest thing really was the fact that the FAA did come out with a rule. They came out with it yesterday, uh, been been sort of active in, in trying to get that, that through. Is this good news uh, to you, this rule? I'm sorry? Is this good news, the FAA's ruling? Yeah, I feel it is. Uh, you know, there are a lot of yays and nays about it or whatever, but it, the one thing I think that really stands out is that, that if it is done, it is another level of safety that the airlines and the carriers and everyone else has and, and the public uh, as far as that goes. Another level of safety to, to ride on an airplane. I understand that it's rare and uh, different occasions and the other gentleman that was speaking said there was the only one like that, but actually there was, the FAA came up with 17 scenarios that uh, really were fuel tank explosions. Um, I, I'm not privy to private information, but that's, I mean, that's what they have on their website, and they've, they've published many, many times. 
Okay, you know, Jim, your group, uh, the TWA Flight 800 Family Association, you know, one of their goals was, was to kind of keep the spotlight on this crash because you wanted to change safety regulations within air travel. And do you feel, you know, this is one of the bigger rulings they've made, but do you feel you've made headway? Yes, I do. Uh, you know, we, we listen to pros and cons and, and over the years and, and feel that it's, it's felt that it was something that was, was worth fighting for and for the people that died on a crash. And, uh, and that, that's one of our one of our goals, you know, was just uh, to fix the plane if there was a fix for it, and this seemed to be the fix. All right, Jim, thank you so much for, for joining us tonight. Quite welcome. Um, you know, uh, Trish Bergen, of course, still here joining us. And she was one of the first reporters on the scene, but Trish, one of the things you said was the hardest thing was telling these families what had happened because you saw how horrific this explosion was. Yeah, and I knew that there were, um, you know, families sitting at home, you know, waiting, awaiting word um, as if whether or not anybody was alive. So that was difficult to have to report that. Then following that was all of the conspiracy theories. Exactly. And you remember this, right? I mean, you know, was it a bomb? It, and e even as, you, as you're answering Lauren's questions, you still sound kind of skeptical. Like, uh, do you feel that it was the vapor buildup or do you feel like it was something different? Well, my personal opinion is what I'll, what I'll give. Uh, the NTSB has much more expertise in that area. And of course, the investigation, as I mentioned, took four years. But I honestly, um, I'm not 100% convinced that's what it is. And being it never happened before or after, OK, uh, makes people wonder even more. And the way accidents are broken down, 80% of the accidents are pilot caused and 20% are maintenance. So that cuts it down even more. Right. You know, Jim Hurd, I know you couldn't hear what he was saying, yeah. but he says there were other instances. Uh, I think he listed about 17 other instances where similar things had happened worldwide. And uh, I don't know if that's a matter of, uh, you know, a broader uh, investigation, but a lot of folks are nervous that the FAA is a little too comfy with the airlines here, that they were kind of, um, you know, letting the airlines run roughshod over them, and that's why this took so long. Do you think that's the case? Well, part of the thing was, uh, if uh, you remember, we were here back uh, in April talking about the Southwest problem, being cozy right. with the airlines. Right. And that was a situation where Congress is investigating the FAA right now. It's been going, going for the last three months. So I believe the FAA um, was pressured to, to pass this. All right, we're going to have to take a quick break. More on this. When we return, we're discussing TWA Flight 800. 516-393-1800 is the number you can call. We're going to take more of your calls when we return. Yeah, it's a very Some of the wreckage that was found following the explosion and crash of TWA Flight 800 12 years ago tonight. Welcome back to Long Island Talks on News 12 Long Island. We're discussing that tragic flight on the somber 12th anniversary. Joining me once again, News 12 Long Island's Trish Bergen. She was a first reporter on the scene and former Federal Aviation Administration Inspector Richard Wierowski. And now joining us on the phone, James Kalstrom. He was the former head of the FBI New York office. He was the man who led the FBI investigation of Flight 800. Uh, James, are you there? I am. So tell us. I don't know how long, but I am right now. <laughs> okay, we're good. We're glad to have you. Um, tell us what you what you found in your investigation from this flight. I'm sorry. Say that again. W what did you What did you decide from your investigation on this flight? <laughs> well, as I've stated hundreds of times, I agree with the determination of the uh, NTSB uh, as to the fact it was not, in my view, it's not was not absolutely not an act of terrorism. And their explanation of the mechanical slash electrical failure, you know, I'll, I'll accept that. That's not what we do. We don't determine those types of things. But, but um, there's no question in my mind that it was not a criminal act. It was not an act of terrorism. You know, a lot of folks, even 12 years later, say they fully believe that this was not an accident because they had never seen anything like it, and, and you know, there hasn't been anything like it since. And you do not agree with that. <laughs> hey, you know, 